Hello and welcome to the Top 10 Business Ideas video series. So I put this video series together because I know in talking with different people that a lot of people do want to start something on their own. They're interested in that entrepreneur lifestyle. They're interested in opening up their own business, but they have no idea where to start. Or perhaps they have a lot of ideas, but they don't know what would be the best for them, what is worth investing a lot of time and money into. So in this 10 part series, I'm going to go over 10 broad business categories and then specific examples to give you some ideas of what that business might look like. Uh, in addition to the examples, I'm gonna go over a list of pros and then a list of cons. So whenever I'm going through these, think of what would apply to you, what your values are, what your end goal is, what you really want to do when opening up your own business. Um, so I hope that you find this helpful. I hope that it gives you some clarity uh, and Please feel free to reach out. I'll put all my contact info below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe. And I hope that you are able to find your next amazing business idea. All right, enjoy. Welcome back. This is video six of our 10 part business startup idea video series. That's a mouthful to say. So in this video, we are going to be talking about how to open and run a business selling products. What is a product-based business? Well, this is the selling of physical products and it can be online, it can be in a store, or it could be at tables or markets. There's a lot of different places where you can sell products. So there's a lot of different ways to run a product-based business, and I want you to begin by asking yourself the following questions to become clearer on what your business might look like. So, will you create the products? Or will you have the products manufactured? Will you purchase the products from a manufacturer or from a wholesaler? Will you be selling to businesses, which is considered B to B, or to customers, B to C? So business to business or business to customer. If you manufacture or import products from overseas, you can either sell to distributors or wholesalers who sell products to retailers, or you can sell directly to customers. So you can see there's so many different ways to go about this. Ask yourself, where will you store these products? Will you manufacture, or you'll, if you have a manufacturer, will it be in this country or outside of your country? Will you sell in a store, an online store and or platform like Amazon, Etsy, eBay? You can have multiple sales channels to increase profit potential. So you can have a regular store, you can also sell products on your store's website, and then you can also even venture out to different platforms like Amazon or eBay. So that's why I encourage you to just, if you're interested in this, start asking yourself a lot of questions so that you become very clear on how you're going to run it. And doing just a little online research in this area can help further your understanding of all the options that are available to you. So another thing to consider uh, when selling products is that selling products can be passive or can be active. So if this is the first video that you're watching of the series, I have explained in the introductory video what passive income is versus active income. Passive income is where you are not directly exchanging your time for money. And active income is where you're directly exchanging your time for money. So for example, if you have a bricks and mortar store and you're there selling physical products, Unless you're there or somebody else is there selling physical products, you're not, you're not earning income. But if you have a passive system in place where people can buy the products and you don't have to physically be there selling it to them or shipping it to them, and I'll go over this what this means in, ex in just a second, that's gonna be more passive. So for example, drop shipping is fairly passive. Again, if this is your first video, drop shipping is when you essentially make a deal with a manufacturer or wholesaler that they are going to ship their products directly to your customers. 
So this primarily is an online type of way to run a business. You have a website, you put products up on your website, a customer buys a product, you then let your drop shipper know and they send it to them. Now they do take a portion of the profits uh, in exchange for this, but it does make it very passive because you can work from anywhere. You don't have to be directly packaging and shipping and all of that. So that's a passive example. But if you are creating products or selling products by hand, this is very active because again, you're, you're not going to make any money unless you are creating those products or unless you're physically handing them to somebody or one of your employees is physically handing them to somebody in exchange for currency. So let's move right into the pros now that we kind of explored all the different avenues that you can sell products. And one quick note before we go into our list of pros is that just keep in mind that all these business models will have entirely different pricing and marketing strategies as well as costs associated with them. Making a product from scratch and selling it directly to customers online will look very different than importing products from overseas and selling them to businesses. For this reason, the pros and cons will vary. So whenever you're listening to these, try to apply them to the business that you have thought up in your head. All right, so the first pro is that you can turn ideas into profit. So too many people have great ideas, but they do not think it's feasible to turn these ideas into actual products and sell them. There are plenty of manufacturers inside and outside the US who can likely turn your ideas into actual products. So if you have an idea for something, there is a way to, to make it into a physical product and to sell it. So you can be creative in selling products. This can be the perfect business for someone who is creative and enjoys designing. So if you like to design certain products, then, then that's great for you. Also, if you want to open up a boutique and you like the interior design and ways to draw customers in and be aesthetically appeasing, that's another great avenue so that you can express that kind of creativity. Selling products can also be lucrative. You can make a lot of money selling products. This varies drastically with every business and you will need to think of all the overhead costs versus your profit margins, how much money you're actually going to be bringing in uh, when you're making your business plan to, to get those financial projections and, and know how lucrative your business will hopefully be. The fourth pro are there's lots and lots of options. Like I mentioned before, you could do bricks and mortar, you can do online or both. It can be passive or active. The possibilities are endless and you can find something that matches both your interest and your budget. So that is the beauty of selling products is if you have, if you want to really invest a lot in, in this company, in this business, then you can, but if you want to start small, then you're also able to do that. And like I mentioned earlier, drop shipping products can be very inexpensive. And that again, is just when a manufacturer or wholesaler directly ships products to your customers. And it can be an excellent way to make money and build a brand with very little startup costs. So if you just want to start a name for yourself, then this is a good way to go about doing it without a lot of overhead expenses. All right, so moving right into the cons. And again, keep in mind that it's going to be different depending on what your business is going to look like. But the first con is that it can be a high overhead to produce initial products. You may have to purchase a large inventory and or pay a lot to, pro excuse me, and or pay a lot for product manufacturing before you make any products. So you have to have that initial startup fund oftentimes to before you can even do anything. The second con is if you are planning to design and create your own products, uh, patents and legal fees can be very expensive and time consuming. So if you're creating a product, you have to look into getting a proper patent and you can research this, but talking to a professional patent lawyer is highly suggested. So there are attorneys, but then there's also patent attorneys that have to take a whole separate bar to be able to become a patent attorney um, because it's, it's just that complicated. 
So if this is something you're interested in and passionate about, take the time and, and the money and talk to a patent attorney. You also need a place to manufacture and store products. And this can be time consuming as well as expensive. So you have to find a good manufacturer um, or you had to find the perfect location for your boutique or perhaps even if you have an online store but you are making or keeping your own products, you have to find a place to store those. So those are all things to consider. You also need to keep track of inventory. It can be hard to know how much to purchase or to manufacture and, and how much to keep in stock. And it's often a learning curve that can be frustrating for both business owners and customers. So you don't want to have too much inventory, but then if a product's really hot, or maybe uh, you sell clothing and a certain size is just sells out immediately, and then you have to wait a while to get it either manufactured or you know get it um, back in stock from your wholesaler, then that can be frustrating for both you and for customers who want to buy those products. And then the final con is that if creating products, you will need testing and modifications. So you will need to get product samples before you can mass produce your product. And this can also be expensive and time consuming, especially if your manufacturer is outside of your country. Because either you're gonna go over there or most likely it's going to be a shipping back and forth and then communication via Skype or email or, or some way that you can communicate with your manufacturer overseas. So just keep in mind that that's something that is going to take often more time than, than you would like. So that is a list of the main cons. Again, they're, they're different depending on, on actually what kind of products you're going to be selling and how you're going to be selling and manufacturing them. And that wraps it up for product-based business. So just to conclude everything, a general overview of what we talked about, selling physical products, this, this type of business, excuse me, is selling physical products in exchange for money. It can be online, in person, or both. General pros are that you have the possibility to create new products. It can be a lot of fun. It can be potentially lucrative, and there's lots of different options to go about doing this. Where the cons are the high potential costs. It can be very time consuming. Inventory and manufacturing concerns can become very frustrating. And there's also legal considerations depending on your business model. So that is it. Uh, this concludes the sixth video in our 10 part business startup video series. And the next video is going to be all based all about service based businesses. So don't take that name for what it is because you might be surprised about all the different kinds of service based businesses you can run. So go ahead and check that out if that's something that you're interested and take care. I'll see you later. Thank you for watching. And if you would like more information, please go to www.mymbse, that's mymbse.com. And if you would like to receive your free copy of the top 10 mistakes of new entrepreneurs and how to prevent them, click below for details on how to get that.